Hi everyone. I'm going to teach you how to make our Gloria Gator. I will survive. Get it? But this is our Gloria Gator. And what it is, is it's a gator. But the designs that we saw online, um, we tried them out and they were way too tight for us. They really, we couldn't talk. It was tight on our neck. It was not comfortable. So a gator is what I've seen runners wear in the winter, skiers wear them to keep warm, even construction wear the, wear, workers wear them uh, to keep dust out. So um, this is, so you wear it like this. And when you have to go in somewhere where you have to have a mask on, you just pull it up and you're ready to go. So you look nice all day. When you need it, you pull it up. When you don't need it, you pull it down and you look nice. So what was happening to me with the face masks, with the elastic around the ear, is I get blues in them. And so I needed one in the car and one in my purse and one in every room. And so this is better for me because I lose things. It's around my neck. I can just totally forget about it until I need it. So we love this design. Now these are our kits. So in the kit, you will get enough fabric to make three gaiters. So we have some really pretty prints for the ladies, very pretty. And then we also have solids. So if you want to go more conservative, or these are great for men. The men don't mind wearing these at all, but they're really pretty fabrics. Um, they are a very, very high quality knit that is very tightly knitted, more like a micro knit. The gator is two layers, so you've got two layers of protection, whereas the gators that they buy in the sporting goods stores, they are a single layer of knit, which wouldn't give them enough protection. So this is a double layer of very high quality cotton knit, so it's 95% cotton, 5% lycra, so it's got a lot of stretch. It stretches in four directions, so uh, one, knits, very stable knits, only stretch in at left to right, let's say, at, whereas our knits will stretch four-way. It's called a four-way stretch, and that's really important for the comfort, so you're not restricted in any way. So, but our, our knits are very, very tightly knitted, very fine fabric. They're really comfortable, really soft, very high quality. So I think you're going to really enjoy sewing this and see that it is a much better quality knit than uh, clothing that you can buy in the stores. So, all right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we've got our two pieces of knit. And you'll see that we, uh, the one side is cut narrower than the other. So you want to go right sides together. Now don't stretch your knit. Don't pull on it before you start to sew because then your fabric's going to curl. So you can see it curling on me a little bit. So I'm just going to line up the two layers of fabric and clip them. And I'm going to clip them all the way around. You can pin them if you don't have the clips. Well, I just really like using the clips, especially when I'm using the serger because then there's no chance that I'll try to cut through one of my pins. So I'm gonna take these clips and also it's just kind of nice because you won't jab yourself with a pin. So I'll go all the way around, uncurling it. See if you stretch it, it's gonna really curl. So you don't wanna do that. Make it easy on yourself. And I'll just go all the way around and clip. So just whatever, about five or six inches smoothing as I go. Not too worried if it doesn't end up matching up on the end because we can take care of that when we sew the next seam. So I did the, the one side, we'll swing around and I got the clips on the other side. I'm gonna smooth it as I go. So the, a, a true gator is very straight. We cut ours at an angle because we wanted it to be looser around our neck and look more like a scarf. So you'll see. So this, the wider end, will go at the bottom. And just uncurl it and clip. So the reason how we got this idea is I went to the grocery store and I saw so many people there and... Um, since I'm so into making face masks, I was looking around and I did see someone with a gator on. And I thought, this is interesting. I think we could adapt this to make it something that we might like and even like to wear after this is all over. 
Okay, so I'm gonna take the bottom edge and I'm gonna mark it. So I'm gonna sew on and then I'm gonna mark it and then mark it again about three inches apart. All I'm doing is marking an opening that I can put my hand through and turn it right side out. So I'm gonna take it to the serger and I'm gonna sew on this bottom, this edge. So I'm just gonna tuck it under the serger. I'm sewing on the wonderful Baby Lock Acclaim serger with Jet Air threading. It's so, so nice and smooth. So when I get to the end, now a setting on the serger. So if I have it in normal, that's gonna stretch the knit out of shape as I sew. So I just go one click up. One click up will eliminate the stretching. If I go all the way up, it will actually gather the fabric. So if I wanna make a ruffle, I go all the way up, but I'm gonna go to normal and just one click up and that's gonna eliminate the stretching. So as I come towards my first marking, I'm just gonna angle off. I'll swing around and then I'll angle back on. So there's my other marking. I'll take this clip out and just angle on. And go down, taking the clips out as I go. We'll have to time it, but I, it just feels like these go together in about 10 minutes. So they're very, very, very fast. And they just look so nice. So I'm just cutting off a very little bit as I go. So there I did the long end. Then I'm gonna flip it over to the other side and I'm gonna do the short end. But this side, I don't need to leave an opening. So I'm just gonna tuck under. It's gonna grab it along. Taking out the clips as I go. And I'll just go the full length. You can see how nice the stitching is on the Baby Lock Serger. Okay, now I'm gonna create a tube. So here's what I have. So I have the opening and I'm gonna take that clip out and this clip out and I'm going to grab inside and I'm gonna make the tube right sides together. So you see the wrong side of the fabric on the outside, the two ends of the fabric are right sides together. I'm gonna match up the seam and clip. I'll leave my thread tails out here. Just matching up the seam and then I'll find that other seam and match it up on this end and put a clip in it or a pin and maybe shake it around a little bit. So this is what you'll end up with and we're going to clip that just so I make sure that I catch that bottom layer as I'm surging. There we go, I've got the other side and we'll clip. So the pieces in your kit are pre-cut. All you just sit down to your sewing machine or your serger and you just start to sew. So now I'm gonna take it, so I form this tube Here's my opening. That's the opening I'm gonna turn it with. And I'm gonna get on. I'm just gonna take the clip out, position it, and then. And so I'm clipping it. See, I wanna make sure when I'm surging that I see the bottom layer of fabric. I don't want it to slip underneath and not catch it. So I'm just cutting off a little bit, and in that I can see that I have two pieces being cut off, so I know that I'm catching that bottom layer. So I'm just cutting off about an eighth of an inch. Take the clip out and keep going. Smoothing my fabric as I go around. I wanna make sure I don't catch this underneath. There we go. 
take the clip out. Keep going, keep on rolling. I can see them coming to the end here. You just keep going. And once your stitches overlap the stitches that are already there, just angle right off. Snip. So here we have it. We have the opening. And now I'm going to turn this right side out. So I'm just gonna grab it and turn right side out. And it feels like it's not gonna turn right. All of a sudden you'll flip it and it creates this tube with both layers of fabric on both sides. We like it with matching fabric in case it rolls over. So here, now, to close it up. Now I have, I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine to close up. You can close this up with a, a hand needle, but I don't like ever doing that, but you could slip stitch it close with just a needle and thread. Okay, you wanna close it though, because that wrong side of the fabric will curl out if you don't. So you wanna make sure that you close that. We're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to use, I'm on the Baby Lux Soprano, and the stitch that I like to use most for knits is this stitch. It's called the lingerie stitch. It, it looks like a little lightning bolt, but after you've sewn a seam with it, it looks like you've done a straight stitch, but you'll see. Now I have a thread in here that's gonna show up. So you'll wanna use a thread that will blend in with your fabric. So I think I'm gonna put a clip in here so I know when this starts and ends, so I know how far I have to go. So the opening is about right here, and it ends about right here. Again, you'd use a matching thread. I have this lightning bolt stitch in, and I'm just gonna position it. Oh, see, it wants to uncurl, maybe one more clip. I think I'll put a clip right here. Because the fabric wanted to start on curling, so, or curling is what it's doing. So I'm going to lift my presser foot. I'm going to position that seam, making sure I don't catch it underneath. And I'm just going to do a little top stitch to close that. Just about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Then I'm sure that it's holding it. Now one of my favorite parts about this machine is the pivot function, the automatic tie and knot and the automatic cutting of the thread. I love this machine. It also has a feature, it's automatic fabric sensor system. So this machine can sense how thick the fabric is and it knows how to adjust the presser foot pressure. So I don't have to worry about those settings. So I'm just gonna close that up. The clip is coming right here. When I come to the end, I take my foot off the foot control. Notice it lifted my foot for me. I press my reverse button once. It ties a knot, cuts my thread, and lifts my foot for me. So you can see that little lightning bolt stitch there, and it will not break. If I use a regular straight stitch, that stitch will break. Now at this point, I already have a scarf on, but at this point, I'm gonna try it on and see how tight it is. We cut ours so they will fit for a man or a woman. So I'm gonna take this one off and we're gonna try on this one. So I wanna have the seam in the back. I'm just gonna pull it over my head. And see how nice it just drapes really nice. This fabric is so nice, our knit fabric. I'm hoping when this is all over that you come back to our site and purchase knit fabric to make uh, tops and dresses and pants with it because it is just really high quality knit. But anyhow, I'm going to pull it over my face. And you know, this actually feels pretty good, but I want to show you what I would do if it felt like it was a little bit too loose but this feels good to me. So I'm gonna take it off and all you'll wanna do is take a little tuck in the back, okay? You can go, uh, you know, there's really no right and wrong side to this, so it doesn't matter 
uh, which side you do the tuck. So like a little dart. Now a dart is where you go wide here and then just do it, angle it in. That would be a dart. And then a tuck is just going straight up and down. And all we're gonna do is just that first inch, that's all. That will hold it tight enough over your nose so that when you pull it down to your neck, it isn't too tight on the neck. Okay, so here, so I have the seam. I wanna make sure that I have the seam at the top and it's 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 looking good. It's it's good. So if this, if that seam was way down in, I want to, you know, shake it and rearrange it. And then I'm just going to take it and mark it. So grab it, see how much you feel like it needs to be taken in. I'm just, for this one, I'm just going to take it in just about three quarters of an inch. Now remember, I have the contrasting thread so you can see what I'm doing. But I want you to, you know, make sure that you use a thread that blends in with the fabric. And this is another feature that's really nice on this machine. As I start to sew, it's kind of thick right there. And I can see that my um, fabric is not feeding. So when the foot lifts, I'm going to press this black button. And I'm going to press it until I can feel the pin go into the foot. And then I'm going to lower the foot and then start to sew. And that's going to that's going to hold everything level so it will feed the fabric once i see it's starting to feed i can let go and then keep going so i don't know i kind of just like taking a tuck and with this i have it set up for the automatic tying of a knot i only sewed one inch i'm going to press the button and it will tie a knot cut the thread and lift my foot. So if you don't have a feature like that on your machine, you can come to us and we will sell you a wonderful baby lock. But if you don't have that feature, just make sure that you go in reverse and tie a knot. Now, if you do not have this lingerie stitch on your machine, you're gonna wanna select regular zigzag. So on this machine, it's number six. And um, you're gonna set the stitch length. So the stitch length to one, so I'm going to go to one and the stitch width to one. So one and one, and maybe I'll take this one and sew a little bit on it while here. And I can easily take this out. So I'm just going to sew a little bit on this one. Okay, I'm going to take the automatic knot and the automatic cutter out. Okay, so I'm just gonna lower my foot and I'll just sew a little bit just to show you that it's a teeny tiny little zigzag. So when you turn your fabric right side out, it's gonna look like you did a straight stitch, but it's a tiny little zigzag. When you pull it, it does not break. So you can do that stitch. There's another one that you can do. There's overlock stitches on the machines and they will sew the seam and zigzag the edge at the same time. And those stitches are in the top lid here. Um, on this Baby Lock Soprano, there are 11 different stitches that will overlock, but my favorite one is number 19. It's just the one that I've used my whole life, but there, ha there is number 17 and number 28 that look just like the four thread overlock stitch. So if you don't have an overlock, those are, will look very close to it. But I'm going to just sew a little bit on this one with number 19. So I'm going to select that menu and press one, nine, just thinking, there, and there it is. So it pictures the stitch for me. That's why I love the Baby Lock Soprano. The um, Baby Lock Brilliant is the same way. So I'm just gonna run this stitch just so you can see how it forms. And so what it does is it sews the seam and zigzags the edge at the same time. So I cut the thread. So this is the stitch I would use on the sewing machine. It looks just like the overlock stitch. It sews the seam and zigzags the edge. And what's nice about the overlock is it, it compresses that seam allowance and makes it lay real nice. Well, these stitches built into your baby lock will work the same way. All right, so go to our website sew412.com uh, look for our Gloria Gator and Gator is spelled G-A-I-T-E-R 
our website, so412, and that is sew412.com. And thank you so much for your business. <music>